let's talk about MVNOs. Yes. This is seven things you need to know, mm-hmm. or maybe seven things you didn't know or should know. Yeah. About a particular carrier. Right. So MVNOs as a whole, mobile virtual network operators. Yes. And these are going to be your alternatives to the big players. Everybody mm-hmm. knows Verizon. Everybody has seen AT and T, T Mobile. But some people might see a commercial for a brand or drive by a store or see something in a store for a carrier that they're not really familiar with. Yeah, like who is that? What do they do? Oh, I, what's the difference from what I already have? So yeah. uh, a couple of things about MVNOs, they tend to come cheaper yes. when it comes to rate plans. Yep. Because they kind of strip away some of the extra stuff that yep. are value features packed into your carrier plan Mm -hmm. and they could charge you so much but then they tell you well we give you all these things Mm -hmm. you can text other countries or make calls and do these things that you may never even use Mm -hmm. if you don't have to deal with customer care you might not care that there is no store to go to Mm -hmm. there are a number of different things that make each mvno unique and maybe potentially worth your money Mm -hmm. or your you know to try them out today we're going to talk about one in particular Luke, you're going to tell me a little bit about U.S. Mobile. Yeah. And I'll ask you the questions, yep. and then we'll go through and kind of educate readers, listeners, followers uh, about the carrier. Okay. So, U.S. Mobile, Yep. what network service provider does it use? So, they're, they're an interesting one because they have a deal with uh, two companies. Mm-hmm. They use uh, Verizon Towers and T-Mobile Towers. Um, which is cool because um, it's becoming a little bit more of a blurred line now, but before, uh, one was a CD- CDMA technology with mm-hmm. a, uh, um, just a radio technology, and then the other was GSM technology. Mm-hmm. Um, and basically what that means is uh, U.S. Mobile has the ability to use both of those, so they have a very broad coverage area. Mm-hmm. Does it offer a retail experience? Unfortunately, no. So if you have a problem with US Mobile, they have online support. Mm -hmm. Uh, They have a chat available. They have email. They have a phone number. Um, But if you have any problems, you're going to have to go through that way. You can't actually go to a physical store and and deal with a customer service representative that way. Okay. So if I have a phone now Mm -hmm. and I'm considering US Mobile, Mm -hmm. tell me about the rate plans and so forth. Uh, can I use my existing phone if I decide ultimately U.S. Mobile is for me? Yes, you can. Um, and the great thing about the coverage and the technology that they use, they claim that 99% of the phones out today will work with their coverage. Okay. Will work with their service. So that's a pretty bold claim. And that would be, if you want to, you can also go to their website Probably mm-hmm. plug in the you can't. IMEI and find yep. out. Yep. Okay. So tell me about the rate plans then. What are what is you know, what are the options? They have all kinds of stuff. Um, the basic rate plans. Let's say you just want to do calling and texting. Mm-hmm. You don't even worry about internet. You can get that for one line for eight bucks a month. Okay. And that is unlimited. So if I just say, hey, I just need something for my dad because mm-hmm. he doesn't. Doesn't care about data. Nope. He just wants to pick up his phone, make calls mm-hmm. when he wants to. Yep. Or if you're using this for the family, mm-hmm. uh, just call and text for the kids. As you add more lines to that, it gets cheaper. So $8 a month is one line. If you have uh, two or more, mm-hmm. it's 7 If you go uh, three or more, it's $6 a month. Okay. So you can get it pretty cost of a cost-effective family plan yeah without data sure uh, well if, if if it's your first you know maybe your children are getting their first taste of a cell phone mm-hmm. you, you don't have to worry about data overages nope you say hey you know what as long as you're connected to wi-fi you'll be just fine and or i'm not worried about it keep a phone in the car mm-hmm. you know this is the phone that stays in this car mm-hmm. if anybody in the family is using a different you know if you have multiple drivers and multiple cars in the family uh, I've seen that happen in some families where sure. it's just this is the phone that's in this car. So if I need data, yes, uh, you know I'm like, well, I need to be able to, you know, check my email and do some 
things mm -hmm. remotely, what kind of plans do they so have? So they have different tiered options based on how much data you think you're going to need. Starting at the low end, you can get one gig for $12 a month. Uh, and that includes your talk and text. Mm -hmm. And then if you go all the way up to unlimited, talk, text, and data is 45 okay. a month. And then there's some deals uh, for multiple lines, for family plans, stuff like that, if you want to get in on the unlimited. The other cool thing about the unlimited plans is they have these things called perks. Okay. Uh, and what the perks are is they have about 15 different... Um, types of audio or video streaming or gaming services mm -hmm. that you can pick from. And those are things that you've heard of. So things like Disney Plus, Hulu, Spotify, Audible, you can get those subscriptions included with that rate plan and you could ca cancel it, you know, your uh, one that you pay for separately. And that's something that not very many MVNOs offer. No. That's usually one of the differences mm -hmm. is you don't get these, you know, things included. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, and it looks to be that you can pick and choose which ones. Yes. Instead of saying, well, everybody here gets a year of Paramount Plus. Mm -hmm. Well, actually what I want is PlayStation Plus. Right. As part of my plan. Uh, so that kind of gets into... My follow-up question is, like, special deals. Yeah. So that's that's their unique thing that they bring to the table mm -hmm. um, is the ability to have perks. And those perks, you can have multiple ones. It, you can add more than just what comes with it mm -hmm. if you want to pay for it. So that's another thing is if you wanted to have, you know, kind of everything in one bill, that idea, you can do that. Okay. So uh, – and talk about the rate plans and data. Do you have the 5G network access? I do. Yep. Okay, so T-Mobile and Verizon networks. Yep. You're going to be looking at that. Yeah. Now, one thing to kind of talk about here is prioritization. Yes. And that's something that isn't specific here. Right. But you will run into with MVNOs. Right. So an MVNO, since you. Um, have a deal with these maid providers to use their service the one caveat to that is in uh, congested areas or times of peak usage mm -hmm. um, you have to wait for the uh, the first like the the main customers so yeah. if for some reason all of the Verizon towers in your area were being used you would have to wait uh, or it might be a little slower sure. if a lot of other people who are Verizon customers are using them. So you have access to 5G. Yep. You, you have a big bucket of data or yep. whatever bucket. And you might just run into certain periods around holidays or certain times of the day. Mm -hmm. If you live in a city and everybody's celebrating that you just won the championship, right? you might find that, hey, man, I can't get picture messages to go out quite like I normally do. And generally, any hiccups that you're going to see in MVNOs are... Or just that it's a hiccup. Mm -hmm. It's not a. It's not usually a period where like, oh my service doesn't work for hours. It's it's yeah. a. This takes maybe just a little bit longer than it normally does, mm -hmm. but it is a thing that can happen. And some of the feedback we're getting from like these types of segments and just from talking to other people anecdotally, I find very few people who go to an MVNO go back to a tier one provider. Yeah, they're just hey I'm happy with this I. It's not worth spending the extra thirty dollars a month for this, or I get my whole family for half the price that I used to. Right. And we don't miss anything. Right. So uh, that is something to keep in mind. Is even though it sounds like, oh, that doesn't sound ideal to have slower speeds. It's not all the time. Right. And it's not something that you're going to run into. You know. And also consider if you spend a lot of time on Wi-Fi mm -hmm. at at home or at work or between the two, you're not going to really. You tap into that 4G, 5G, no. like you know, some people anticipate. Yeah. Uh, last question or two here. Look, if I decide I want to go with US Mobile, mm -hmm. I'm ready to get a new phone. Can I do that through them? Yeah. So they have uh, a wide range of devices, uh, whether it's Android or an iOS device, um, and they have current models up to stuff that's a year or so old. Now, the only difference is there's no subsidiaries. They don't give you mm -hmm. any kind of deals, and there's no payment plans that I've seen. 
So you're just looking at buying the phone outright from those providers. Yep. So, But that does give you the ability at the same time, if that's something you're considering, then you can go to Best Buy, yep. Amazon, uh, a phone maker, and, yep. and buy the phone outright at the same time. And your selection is much bigger this way than mm -hmm. what you would find by going through a specific carrier because at least here in the U.S., I think the, the common misconception is I only can select from what's in the store. Right. You know, here you're kind of tasked with being a little bit more self-reliant. You'll find that there's quite a few on their website, but then at that time it opens the door to buying other phones right. from other sources. Right. So uh, this is helpful. Luke, this was U.S. Mobile? Yep. All right. So if you guys have any questions or feedback about this particular carrier... Uh, we'd love to hear about it. Leave us a comment, shoot us an email, and let us know what you think about them. Awesome. Thanks, guys. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of the podcast. Thanks for listening. We appreciate it. If you guys have any questions, feedback, concerns, comments, anything, shoot us an email at podcast at androidguys.com. We'd love to hear from you one way or the other. Uh, Luke, if someone wants to get a hold of you, how do yeah. they do that? Uh, I am on Instagram and Twitter at Luke Gall, G-A-U-L. And I'm on Instagram at Scott Webster and Twitter as SWebster77. Until next time, thanks for listening. See ya.